So good morning, everybody. So today we're going to introduce to you indeed the ambassador school. I'm going to give you a bit of an overview of what it is and why we do it and how it's going to look like this year. And then Luisa and Claudia, who actually took part in it face-to-face -face in Grenoble last year, are also going to explain to you what they learned from this and you know, hopefully how it was useful for them. I hope, let's see what they say. So the program is the, the ambassador school, why we do it, I think is something we all know in Remo, but there might be some people here who are not exactly part of Remo. So in Remo, we share this uh, common understanding that um, there is a mental health issue in general, obviously in the, in the population and it became worse with COVID-19. But we also know from previous studies that there is more risks for researchers to actually end up suffering from a mental health issue, especially for early career researchers. And obviously, all together, we're thinking about, you know, what could we do in order to somewhat make that better? So that's where we actually uh, got started from. We also share this understanding that there are multiple causes for all those uh, mental health issues. And I just put a couple of them on the slide. Some of them may be backed up by uh, some form of scientific evidence. Some of them may not exactly be part of the state of the art today, but at an intuitive level, we all know that there is something kind of sometimes going wrong with the fact that we have to move internationally and that puts us at risk. There is actually research that shows that if um, researchers have caring duties, then they are more at risk than other researchers to get actually mental health issues. We also know from experience that the relationship to the supervisor may sometimes also put us at risk or because we've moved or we're doing something that nobody ever done in our families. We may be also at risk of lacking of a support system to go through the academic circle. Sometimes we're not sure what are our rights. Sometimes we even lack rights. And one of the reasons also sometimes being that we are PhD students and not PhD researchers. So all of that all comes together and the imposter syndrome may be the consequence. I'm not saying it's the cause of the mental health issues, but we are in settings where sometimes, you know, nothing is done for PhD students, for postdoctoral researchers, but also for a tenured professor. Nothing is done to make us actually feel confident that we can do the job that we can do. And from that perspective, we have a bit of a, uh, an institutional problem, an environmental problem, uh, but also, you know, some, uh, some elements on which uh, we may have some form of impact because they may be more cultural. And where uh, the ambassador school in a way comes from is that we all share that form of uh, observations. In a way, a lot of the people who are here may already have taken some actions in order to change that. But when we do it, usually we are very isolated. And so we are trying to spend a lot of energy, but we achieve, I wouldn't say small change because every change actually participates to the bigger, uh, the, the bigger uh, picture. But in a way, uh, we don't have as much impact as what we wanted to do, you know, and you feel like you're alone against the system. And so basically this ambassador school is aiming at bringing people together so that together they may actually see how they can have uh, more impact, use synergies, learn from one another, see what worked in other places, see what they could do in their place. So that when we look at all those you know, elements that may mean that you know, researchers are not feeling good and we have the, the, the evidence for that, then we find solutions uh, that we can apply. And it is a good uh, reflection of the way in which Remo has been thought of, because Remo is really much about, you know, bottom up initiatives and trying to enable anybody who is on the network to actually really go and take action. And it is something that we need as a network, um, as much as we also are gathering evidence, we need to show that we can take action and we can actually change things for the better. So that's the role of the ambassador school. In order to do that, what we do is that we take a bunch of people, or very nice people, and we bring them together. So you have on the screen here, Up the Mountains, the group of last year. And we bring these people together, go through different uh, form of modules, which I will introduce to you in, a, in about a second. Um, last year, it was in Grenoble, where I am based. And this year, we're going to do it in Paris, also in my uh, institution. So you can see already how it looks like, even though it's in Paris, we will have a bit of a garden. We can do a little bit of outdoorsy stuff. Uh, the idea of uh, doing it in Paris is that it's a little bit easier for you guys to actually come here and actually and do not waste too much time on travel. Um, what we will do is that we will learn stuff. 
but uh, we will also, as I said, learn from one another. So we will spend time together because becoming a Remo ambassador is also being part of a community of people, as I said, who actually need to help one another and can get inspired by one another. So this year we're going to do it in three days. The program is going to start on Monday, the 22nd of May, uh, just after lunch around one. And it's going to end just before lunch on Thursday. So you have time to travel in in the morning and you have time to reach your families back uh, on the Thursday afternoon. But it is still three days uh, where we're going to uh, give you training on different elements, elements that pertain to uh, what we can do at the individual level. A lot of it is about uh, mentoring systems. And this year, we're also going to uh, train you to do some form of uh, coaching interviews and you know mental health support interviews. So what does it mean? What questions do we ask? And how can we actually practically do this? It's also about what can be done at the levels of institutions. And there we're going to explain to you how maybe to work with some of the stakeholders and you know what some of us have managed to do in that sense. How do we do the change from within? We're going to then expand a bit from that and try to identify our stakeholders, including the policy stakeholders. And we will discuss, you know, what could be the messages and how, what can we do in order to work with the policymakers. Um, the training is for absolutely anyone who actually wants to take action. So it is as much for permanent faculty that it is for, you know, early career researchers or postdocs or practitioners or, you know, research managers. So anybody who is involved, let's say, in that ecosystem and thinks that they can bring something to actually accelerate some change. I must say that last year, the repartition was mostly either doctoral uh, researchers or permanent faculty. This year, I can already see because some of you have already signed up for the, for the school. So we have a little bit more representation from the postdocs that were absolutely uh, absent from you know, what we did last year. So this is actually a good thing, but I really encourage everybody to, to think of it. Um, it's also for people who have may have done something before, and we also ask for this in the form when you apply, but it's also for people who may not have had the experience of doing mental health uh, actions right now, but they actually really want to do it because they share with us this understanding that you know action needs to be undertaken. So don't shy away. It's really about you know helping one another. So those who have more experience may share a little bit more, but then you know those who actually come with fresh eyes, they also bring something. You don't necessarily have to be um, studying psychology or anything like that. Okay, Some of the ambassadors have that background, but it is not a necessity because we actually are not going to teach you, you know, more of um, how to make interventions on how to put some form of diagnosis. We're really going to look at what's the state of the art in our research ecosystem. So anybody who takes part in that basically uh, could be a very interesting person to come to the, to the ambassador program. What we do, obviously, is to uh, try to train you and teach you some stuff, I hope. But it's also about enabling you to have this space where you can actually just think of, you, you know, what can I do? What can I do with the others? What, what am I going to actually take out of this? So we spend time uh, trying to create action plans. So you individually do this. Hopefully, you know, you will also find people who come from the same country as you do or people who face in other countries similar issues. So you can also think together and you can have a list of your own action points as to, you know, what do I want to do when I get back home? Because again, it is about finding a way to actually take action. You will be able to uh, share, let's say, these things. And then uh, after the ambassador school is over, you can always contact the other ambassadors. So Maybe Luisa and Fulvia are going to mention that, but there is, you know, kind of a, a small community that arose and, you know, people meet on other conferences every now and again. So you can also, you know, get some uh, uh, future inspiration in a way as to how can you uh, sustain the, the actions and really do what you planned on doing. And I must say that uh, I'm quite impressed with what, you know, the ambassadors of last year actually managed to do. It's impossible for us to have a full count. So, you know, if I just think about who went to Budapest, I can think of at least five different presentations, you know, at the Remo conference, which is already a good thing. We have Lisa, who is on the short-term scientific mission. I have heard of three different research proposals that are being um, submitted in order to also advance the agenda on mental health and research. But there is also a lot, a lot that is being done in terms of advocacy and trying to uh, make some change 
So some of us have managed to create some national stakeholder meetings and also uh, get in touch with their policymakers. That's the example in Croatia, where they have started to establish a relationship with the ministry. Uh, some of us got their institutions to actually get into some form of uh, uh, European agreements. So there is the COARA about research assessment that plays a big role basically in uh, mental health. And so institutions are, are signing up. We have uh, working groups that are getting uh, organized at a national level. It's, for instance, the case in France, where now we have several people who come together to support the REMO activities. We have policy papers that are being written within Eurodoc, but by uh, people who actually uh, went to the, to the ambassador school and are leveraging, in a way, uh, if not the, the, the learning, but also probably the energy that they could get to actually get to action. So that's to say, sometimes we think that things are not going to be possible, but suddenly they become possible. They become possible because, you know, after you have been talking about how do I talk with the policymakers, it doesn't feel so scary to actually send an email and try to actually bring up some topics. And that's basically also what happened in Croatia. So what's in there for you is the support system, the sense of the community. It's some form of legitimacy because you can actually say that you are connected to Remo, that you are an ambassador, you have an active role. It also opens up some doors. You will be able in the end to also organize your own Remo satellite events, your stakeholder meetings. You will be able to brand them as such. So suddenly, instead of being an individual researcher who wants to do something, you are a researcher who is doing something but is backed up by an important community. Is the Remo resources for the STSMs, for some meetings, for some conferences, the connections, and hopefully the knowledge. To apply, you have to do it by the 15th of March. I know it is pretty soon, but the Ambassador School is coming up quite soon as well. The way in which this works is that we have a limited amount of uh, seats for the on-site training. And for that, if you are selected, you get the grant and then Brian can explain you a bit more, but basically the grant is to cover your travel costs and you have a daily allowance. But if you can't make it on site, uh, you can always join in uh, through Zoom. So we will be able to broadcast again uh, the, the training school. So you can always attend and you can decide to attend all the sessions or only some of them. So that becomes, uh, that gives you a bit of flexibility. So that's basically what I wanted to share with you about what the ambassador school is like. But maybe before we open to questions, you know, I would like to also give the floor to Claudia and Luisa so they can share their experience and tell you a bit more about, you know, what it means to, to undertake the training. I don't know who wants to go first. Luisa, do you want to go? Yeah, sure, sure. Um, thanks, uh, Stephanie. Um, I'll quickly introduce myself. So I'm uh, Luisa. I'm a PhD student at the University of Amsterdam. The pandemic hit when I started my PhD and it was pretty much impossible for me to, well, to connect and to become part of like any sort of academic or professional community um, and to meet people. And then actually a colleague at the University of Amsterdam, he kind of like, uh, well, uh, suggested Remo to me and um, and uh, suggest for me to become part of one of the working groups, which I will eventually did. And, and from there, it all kind of like started um, uh, that I, yeah, well, that I became uh, a part of uh, a member of the network um, that I, that I um, joined uh, the conference and that I'm now on a, a short term scientific mission uh, in Australia. Um, so, so yeah, I think, well, um, well, I think yeah, Remo is a fantastic network if you are interested in academic well-being and if you are looking for people to connect with and uh, maybe also for collaborators if you're interested in um, well in in doing research on the topic. Um, and it, it it definitely has provided me with with amazing opportunities. Um, so yeah, I'm really grateful for that. Um, and in terms of the ambassador school, I think yeah, it was it was just an um, yeah, it was a really great experience to also really understand um, how mental health is um, being dealt with in, in other um, European and, and uh, countries. Um, and um, because, yeah, if you, yeah, it's, it's somehow, 
well, you, you, you might know your national context, but you don't know much about what, what is happening outside of your university or outside of, of your country, really. So I think that was really interesting for me to see. And again, to connect with other people, both people with an academic, uh, but also with, an, like, with, a, with a different academic background. And um, yeah, I, um, I think the, yeah, the, the program is really rich in terms of like, um, providing um, the ambassadors both with like um, scientific knowledge, but also um, we discussed how to talk to policy people. Um, you know um, how important how important it is that you use the right kind of language when you talk to different to a different audience. So so it was really really uh, a really and really interesting enriching experience, and I could yeah I I, I really would want to recommend it to to anybody. Um, yeah, and I could go, I could go on and go on, but I will now give the give the word um, to uh, Claudia. <laughs> okay, hello. One moment. Hello. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thanks a lot, Louisa. I think now you have really. Um, said a lot of things I'm really totally agree with. Um, okay, my, my name is Claudia, I'm from Germany, and I'm also a doctorate candidate, and I'm a member of, um, uh, of the um, of thesis. Uh, this is an association in Germany, uh, which is interested in, um, in supporting doctoral candidates and postdocs uh, uh, all over Germany. It's an independent um, association. And uh, since the beginning of Remo, uh, Remo started, I'm just a member of this very, very um, great and um, guess um, useful um, topic and, and project. Um, so, I'm being honest, at the beginning, I was very nervous going to Grenoble because I'm an external doctorate candidate, so I'm not working at university. And um, I'm, I do nothing about psychologist uh, experience and something like that. And, uh, and just sitting in the train and I said, what the hell I'm doing there? Uh, what, what, what are my experiences? Expectations. What what are talking about? I do not know any any wordings they're using normally. Psychologists and and um, what 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 will be topics? Are they just talking about some therapies or um, about the? I do not know the order and the laws of uh, X Y Z and, and so on. So I was a little bit nervous and stressed. Because I, I, I just, I, the only people I, I knew there was Brian, uh, just also he is settled in, in Germany and um, Stephanie because of the, the uh, online. Uh, but that at the end it was, um, yes, I, I, I felt a bit alone. Um, I'm interested in this topic. Uh, of because of my own um, just yes um, thinking about my own life because I was ill a long time and it is not really easy then coming back into academic life and um, and I, I know it's in Germany it's very very um, uh, difficult to talk about that and that was my reason just to to support and to manage this Remo uh, project in Germany okay so. In Grenoble, I was really surprised. There only be, of course, uh, psychologists, like you know, you heard about Luisa, and but a lot of other people. And um, and the problems always been the same. So in each countries, you have uh, you have the same problems, maybe or less, or maybe there is uh, one, uh, you know. Uh, a, a project that's really, really great, but you know only uh, reported about uh, three years, and then this project is gone. You know problems in in every in 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 every reason, and so we we got into contact about just talking, about talking about our experiences, talking about our um, our um, yes. Um, 
uh, about our life, about our um, uh, surroundings and um, and what happened and just it's been in the current, it was last year, and uh, about all these things that happened or happened not in Corona times. And so it was really easy just to talk about and to learn about the people that um, that you are just talking about the same um, the same issue. But then I got the next stressing moment to whom I could transfer all my knowledge now. And then I thought, of course, I have managed, uh, I have um, coordinated our uh, symposium in, in Germany about mental health, but just coordinating. I'm not, I'm not an expert, but of course I have 100 addresses just to send all my, um, or to, to send my certificate Wow, I'm very proud about that. And just to explain what we have done. And there's about 100 person just wrote uh, just, uh, in just uh, German wide. And this is just a start. And now every moment I meet people from um, higher education institutions, I'm asking, what's about the mental health issue at your institution? And also sometimes they uh, just, uh, uh, mm, yes, no, it happened, nothing. So just corona and yes, nothing happened really. There are only maybe five or something institutions, they, they just have changed, they have changed management um, in, in, their, in their institutions. And, but on the other side, we have a lot of new studies about, um, you know, um, public health management. So maybe I'm, I'm hopeful in this moment, uh, in a few years, we have a lot of more people and the people they have to work somewhere and maybe they have a um, um, uh, position at the higher education institutions. I'm not sure. Um, so, in, in Germany, it's really not easy just to, to talk about mental health issues. And I think it just, if you had Corona, oh, that's really something happened in your life, but all of the other things are less. So it's just not, not changed the idea of what's about illness or mental health issues. It's just only Corona and the other things, okay, but it's not very really important. And um, I think it takes a lot of more time in Germany just to settle the idea that we need the people, that we need the um, human resources and just to take care about them in every part in our, um, in our society. And now I'm sitting here and I'm, I'm, just I will uh, encourage you just to take part. Um, it's uh, just easier just to speak to people who are interested in because outside maybe you have a lot of people who are not really interested in where they say, no, it's not money. There is not the, the first, not the first problem and, and so on. But we have to go talking on this issue. Thanks. No, thank I give back to uh, Stephanie. No, thank you so much. I think what uh, Claudia is saying is also about how even if maybe nationally you think it's not yet the moment, just coming together can also help you. It will also uh, be useful because we are still working as we know as well on uh, gathering information about all countries so we can have some form of European policy brief. So if you think that maybe um, it's going to be difficult for the national route coming together, you can achieve some impact because you know we can have something that's multinational. And last year we had people from, uh, I don't remember how many countries I must say, but you know we had people who also were coming from Eastern Europe, we had some people who were attending also from Turkey, from countries where you know um, we have a usually you feel that because it's, you know, the new uh, version, let's say, of the era or its neighboring countries, maybe nothing can happen. But actually, these are countries where things are also happening. So don't shy out because maybe, you know, you are in a country where you think it's not, um, it's not so developed. On the contrary, we really aim at finding a balance between, you know, the representations of the countries as well, so we can learn from one another. There's a question in the chat about when you are going to know whether you're successful or not. Uh, we opened um, the application form until the 15th. 
And so, you know, ideally a week after that, you will know, so you can all make your uh, travel plans. That's the, the goal. I think with the cost of hotel rooms in Paris. <laughs> exactly. The sooner we can say, the sooner we, we will say. Make a decision on this at a relatively quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I mean, if we can, the 15 directly, but just give us a couple of days to get organized. But that's kind of the, the overall idea. I mean, there's already like 65 people who registered, uh, which is, you know, uh, very, very, very nice. And I, I didn't ask for gender, but if I look at the first names, you know, I have a feeling that we have like maybe 15 males, which is already way more than last year. <laughs> so, you know, already well done to that. But again, it's also, it's about that it, gender is important, but it's also about diversity. So we are looking at the different profiles you have and all of that. And, that's kind of how, how it goes. Uh, some of the sessions, maybe not all of them, but like most of them will anyway be available uh, on Zoom. We just ask you to register because in that way we kind of know the numbers. So it's a bit easier for us when we have to think about practical work in order to also enable you to have uh, a good experience. Among the trainers that we have that are already confirmed, we have people that you may already have seen on some of the remote stuff. Um, so Dara Makashin, who leads the working group number three, is going to come over and he will discuss mentoring. He has background in psychology and together with him, we had created a peer-to-peer -peer, um, mental health support system for the Marie Curie uh, Alumni Association. So we will discuss that. There will be Anna, uh, Anna Muro. Anna was an ambassador last year and she will give this practical session about you know, learning to do this uh, mental health kind of interview and help people. She will also explain to us uh, all the stuff that she's been doing in our institution because she put together a kind of an impressive program to consider mental health. Um, so she will also be there. There will be uh, Janet Metcalf, who is leading working group number one. And Janet is also going to share her experience of working with policymakers in the UK because uh, the UK is kind of leading the conversation in mental health right now, uh, let's say on the European continent, if you allow me that expression. Um, Stefan Moll is also going to present. He will also explain to us how we can collect uh, evidence. He will talk a bit about the, the, the survey for Remo, but also, you know, have a, a bigger, let's say, conversation as to, you know, uh, what proof we can bring to people. We are looking at uh, several policymakers, hoping that they are going to accept the invitation. But obviously, as you know, even though we speak with them, it's not always easy to have them available on the times of the training school. So we'll see whether that happens. And we have some uh, mental health advocates, which are also going to explain to us uh, how basically they have gathered their community, how they have tailored the message, and what did they do in order to be able to basically pull through and not be only one of those many voices that you can hear somewhere. So that's kind of, uh, if I say it in a nutshell, that's kind of what we will have. And then uh, with Gabor, who is the chair, we are also going to give you a bit of our own uh, insights as to the stakeholders working with the policymakers and you know the type of actions that uh, you guys uh, could undertake that would be beneficial to you, to your, your uh, research culture, and let's say your close environment. There's a question about the survey. Um, there is a survey uh, special interest group that has been working on developing the survey and has already piloted it. Um, and I think if you want to get in touch for the survey, you need to get in touch with either Yana Lasser or Stefan Mo. But from uh, my understanding is that the survey is already taken shape because we are now uh, looking at countries to look at the stakeholders they could actually distribute the survey to and be ready to translate the survey. I think there's still some testing of the questions because I did, I was asked to give some feedback not so yes, long ago. There is testing. So I think but, it's still, uh, uh, yeah. there's still some work to be done, I would say. <laughs> there is still some work to be done, but at the same time, we are supposed to be translating it, it's translating it in May. So, you know, it's uh, the, there is a big phase of the development that has been done. So we That's test, There's a, but I don't Lassen. want to give to people the impression that we can add, you know, many questions. I don't think that's the spirit I of where it is so. right now. We test and we can probably adjust as Ivana is saying testing is on, but then there is a bit of, if you want to know more, uh, get in touch with, with uh, Stefan or Jana. 
Oh, Inga, because she also takes care of that. Yes. Exactly, Ivana. I don't know if you guys have, have more questions, but that's basically uh, kind of the kind of the setup of uh, of all of this. So I'm sure there will be a lot of questions because we have about 40 people in the audience. Um, I know that I think one of the activities that Stephanie missed out on is that we will have a Turkish stakeholder meeting next month in yes. Ankara. And so the, this will be uh, run by um, Gökse Gökalp and her colleagues from mm -hmm. Middle East Technical University. And um, that uh, they have con made contacts because all of the government departments are based in Ankara, the main research funder and so on. So that we've also made contact to the European Commission um, to, uh, to Vite and that this should be quite an interesting meeting. Um, and um, hopefully we'll get a big, a large attendance. Um, so that's, this is, is, is one um, example of what, what can be done. I think another good example was the, was the meeting that Thesis and Claudia ran in 2021 oh, yeah. before she was, she went to the ambassador training school. I think this was quite a big meeting. It was kind of like a three separate, um, three separate day long workshops um, for researchers in Germany and kind of aimed at different levels of um, the research environment at researchers at policy and at the institutional level so this was quite that was 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 a, a, a very interesting initiative indeed and I mean if you start to organize stuff in your countries I think it really helps because you know like even in my case, just like organizing the ambassador school has enabled me to really be able to identify other people in this country who wants to do things. And now we are probably going to have not exactly a stakeholder meeting, but after the ambassador school, we're looking at uh, uh, getting in touch the first day afternoon with some of the, pe the important people in Paris. So all of that really helps. Sometimes, you know, setting up a webinar is something that could be interesting or, you know, just like doing some form of gathering at your university because there may be people only in other faculties that you don't know. So all of that is basically part of creating the conversation. And I think I think also we had quite a lot of uh, a few research managers last year and research managers, particularly as pa Paula Lope, Lopez Perez from uh, yes. Portugal. Um, kind of Paula was uh, responsible for implementing Coara within her uh, institute, yeah. and this is, uh, is 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 a different level of engagement in the research environment. So I think that it's not just for early career researchers. Early career researchers mm -hmm. are great, but that we also kind of have um, a focus on many different uh, levels and kind of yeah. I mean, if you look at the example of Croatia, the they're working now with the with the the ministry on research to try to actually advance the conversation. So, I mean, early career researchers can do that, mm -hmm. but you know, you could also uh, think of activities that are in a way, and I don't mean it in a judgmental manner because I think it's very important, but it's not only about, you know, listening and peer-to-peer -peer support. This is part of the game, but it could also be something else. It doesn't mean that you have to think about, you know, mentoring only, let's say the younger generations. It could be about using the position you have within the university to make sure that Quora is actually accepted, to make sure that some uh, uh, human resources policies maybe change or stuff like that. And so depending on where you're coming from in your background and your position, you may have leverage on some things more than on others. So altogether, it's all fine, but you don't have to be thinking about, you know, being cornered to specific types of, uh, of activities. And I think that's important, especially for us as Remo in the next phase of the project thinking about the institutional change and thinking about the policy change is also going to be very important. Sometimes we have people also who are uh, PhD representatives in their institutions. I think I've seen in the applications right now, somebody who is saying that they um, represent like the PhDs across the faculties for, for the universities. So, you know, you can be a, a PhD researcher and have lots of potential leverage. You can be a, poly, a, a PhD researcher who maybe did not do much, but you really feel strongly about it and you want to have that, you know, in your pockets, you can also do it, you can be a permanent professor, it doesn't exactly matter.
I've seen that some there were some questions in the chat, but I think they've already been answered. I think the the question in the chat was about whether somebody can be can attend the school self financed. Um, yeah, so we don't have much space. <laughs> So from that perspective, I think it's just like last year and we are going to uh, allow a limited number of people mm -hmm. to come over and they will come over with the grant so that uh, it is uh, more manageable for us in terms of space and also, you know, to organize, let's say, the school. But then, as I said, we will broadcast some stuff on Zoom so you can always catch up with this. Um, Anastasia Papani Kalau. Uh, has a question about um, certificate of participation that if you only yeah, attend you still online. still get it online or not. So for us, is if you have attended the sessions, you will still get your certificate of, atten of, of attendance. And Doris Lassay has a question about how many people will attend. I think it will be about seven um, train trainers and maybe 21 um, trainees attending. I think we will see the budget as we go along. And I think so, uh, particularly some of the trainers won't be there for the full um, uh, training school. So that may free up enough budget to squeeze another couple of people in. <laughs> so exactly. I'd say that it will be about 28 to 30 people um, with travel grants and beyond that, uh, I don't know if there are local attendees or um, self-financed attendees, but I don't know the the, the room, <laughs> so I, I can't um, I can't commit uh, Stephanie to anything beyond. Um, yeah, you know, no, what's I think possible. that when we are at twenty eight thirty limit is kind of where it's uh, where it stops. Uh, I know it's a frustration, you know, when people cannot cannot attend. But uh, we do with the funding that we have and with the, politi the, poli the possibilities, sorry, that we have. But again, the, the idea is really to try to broadcast the rest. And we have people who have attended online last year. And I saw that Hatcher actually connected again mm -hmm. today. And she had been uh, going through, you know, the school online. Okay. And I think you still learn stuff. You still appreciated that experience, right, Hatcher? Yes, yes, uh, mm, uh, I appreciate very, very much uh, this uh, um, uh, opportunity. In fact, um, I have, I'm, go I'm going to organize some uh, workshop in this uh, week. And um, I've already uh, organized one workshop in the institution. And um, the feedback of this workshop was very positive. So uh, the participant was talking to another uh, a colleague, and uh, she invited me to, to do the, the workshop of uh, this week. And um, I'm really excited about this experience. In fact, um, my background is computer science, but um, the, the thing that um, I, um, before my, and during my PhD student, I was really focused on human skills and uh, so on. So I have a little background about uh, um, health, mental health problem, and so on. And um, mm -hmm. during this, in the last period, I, I have, I've learned so much about this point, and um, uh, I'm really appreciating this experience. Uh, being a present online last year uh, gave me more chance to, 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 to be in contact with the different participants uh, around the world. And um, uh, that's it. And uh, the thing that I am really also happy uh, is that um, next, uh, not next week, I will have uh, the third workshop. Uh, it will not be in my university, University of Karen, but it will be at the University of Sousse, which is another university in Tunisia. Uh, the same point I shared. Um, uh, my experience through uh, network, uh, through uh, LinkedIn, and I was contacted by uh, by uh, other colleague to do uh, this workshop in another university. Okay. Uh, and I think that I'm really happy that the person who are present in this workshop uh, they get they 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 leave this workshop with a um, good feeling. 
and um, and uh, this is is very, I, I I think that it is very very important to see people that are um, that will take action with regard to their mental health, their mental health uh, with um, things that are um, in fact um, uh, really uh, easy to make and uh, you know, to do. Thank you so much, Ajar, for sharing that. Yeah, indeed. So you see, I think it's a, it's a good example of how you can leverage that experience, even if you don't come, if you publicize it, and then you can try to organize things, and then it's like it's, it's a snowball effect. And that's also part of activities that we actually need to have the, the conversation going on. So we try to, uh, last year, we, we may paid a lot of effort for that, and we'll do the same this year. We try to make sure that online you also have your moments, of course, for your breaks. We know it's difficult to follow like entire days. We also uh, try to make sure that you have proper uh, breakout rooms so you can also connect with people. You can make that link. You can also reflect, you can present and you can ask as much as the people who are actually uh, on site. So we will pay attention to this. We also try to develop a collaborative approach to, um, you know, the, the thinking that, you know, we all need to do. So we open uh, Google Docs and stuff where it's as easy for the people who are online, maybe even easier <laughs> to actually contribute and, you know, put stuff about their countries and their ideas and their thoughts uh, as it is for the people who are on site. So we're paying lots of attention to this because, again, we know it's uh, frustrating sometimes when you can't uh, when you can't travel, even though it comes with some, let's say, maybe additional flexibility. So we'll do our best to accommodate uh, everyone as usual. I don't see any more uh, questions. We're anywhere reaching kind of the, the, the end of the time that we had uh, planned. You can always contact me if you have a question or you're not sure, or you can contact Brian if you know you have a question as well. Um, we're always here to try to you know help you out with this. And don't hesitate to spread the word. Okay, so if you have you know other people who may be interested, please uh, share that with them. And I hope that I will see many of you in Paris or in Zoom online in Paris.